Hi, I'm Jay from Team 10 100 Phoenix Force, and we're here showcasing our robot in 30 hours robot. Um, there's a lot of different subsystems on this robot we want to talk about, but um, I think the first thing that we, everyone wants to know about is definitely uh, our scoring mechanism. So we kind of uh, went a little on a tangent for this one uh, compared to a lot of other teams' scoring strategies. Uh, we decided to use some type of conveyor belt uh, hooked up to a uh, Gobelda Linear Viper Slide that has a claw that grabs from the bottom and uh, it's going to extend out the uh, scoring depot and deposit the pixels. This video on fun is made possible by viewers like you and also the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Um, and then after we bring it up. So obviously, as this is a 30-hour robot, uh, there's a lot of uh, little nitpicky things that we have to worry about. But essentially, um, the strategy that we're using is we're picking up. Uh, we've got a little uh, compliant wheel on the ground hooked up to a servo that's hooked up to a, another servo on the side that's going to pretty much flip it over. Obviously, as you see, sometimes there's issues with gripping. Uh, when we were te when, in, the, in, the, in the testing stages, everything was going decently. But uh, sometimes you got to be a little careful with uh, flipping it. Once it flips, it should flip into this uh, little space right here. And then we start our, uh, our mechanism. And that will bring it up to the top where it will launch, kind of launch it over the top of the, uh, the front of the robot. Turn, you can turn against me. Lower the arm, please. Open it. Yep, go. You know, stuff to fix, obviously. So uh, the reason that it's not working as it 100% should be is uh, right now our Viper slide um, isn't, it doesn't have enough torque to lift our entire system up to the uh, scoring element. Usually uh, the, planned, uh, the plan of action would be to take this entire system and have it uh, reach here and be really close but not touching uh, the scoring system so that we wouldn't uh, really mess with any of the elements scored on there. But it would it would pretty much just flick off of there up onto the backdrop and then it would slide down the top. So we'd be scoring from the top. We wouldn't we wouldn't mess with anything on the bottom. Um, but we just have to fix with the slides and hope we can get that fixed before uh, the matches. We can talk about some other let's talk about some other elements. I've talked. Um, let's talk about the how we launch our airplanes. So here we have a rubber band and a sort of launcher here. We were among the first teams to come up with an original idea with a rubber band to use to launch the drone. Um, we, with a lot of collaboration, we hoped to inspire and influence other teams to use our idea as a starter to build on it and make their own. Um, so here, if we wanna demonstrate it, we can. The accuracy depends on where we place the robot on the field. Um, hopefully you'll see it be most of the time super accurate in the actual matches. Yeah. I think. I think. Uh, yeah, we can demonstrate. Three, two, one. One more. Uh, we have the other. We have two different types of planes too, depending on where the first one lands, where how our tests go, we'll choose one in the actual match. But you can set it up again. Three, two, one. 
again, it depends on where we put the robot in the field. Yeah, I think a big part of uh, this year's airplane launching is definitely going to be where you launch it from the field and also the type of airplane. We did a, a lot of different type of testing with type of airplanes, and uh, we have found a lot of funny conclusions with the airplane that you should use and, and a lot of different strategies. Um, earlier, we shot a video with our paper prototype of the airplane that it was the first ever airplane we made in the 30-hour challenge. And after that, if you go to our workplace, you'll find countless sheets of paper and countless airplanes. Some are crumpled, some are in the trash. They're everywhere. But we had this thing where sometimes you'd make an airplane that goes too far, and then you'd end up scoring less points because that'd end up in landing zone three. And then we'd make airplanes for example, the red one, that would go too short and wouldn't go past the wall. So, and now we're in that area of, like the blue plane over there, of finding that Goldilocks zone of airplanes that land in landing zone one or two, getting us more points. Uh, is there anything else on your robot that you want to show off at all? Um, one thing um, I'd like to talk about is kind of our intake systems. So one thing we experimented a lot with in these 30 hours is our intake systems. We made over 10 different iterations in this 30 hours. So it was quite busy. Um, and this actually, the one on our robot is not our final one. We were actually making different um, intakes until the very last minute. And this is the first one that we could actually get on there and get coded in time for this competition. But we have the one that um, is kind of better than this one. But yeah, this is the one that we have um, programmed. Uh, but we uh, experimented with different kinds of wheels, and um, we actually originally planned to have um, kind of like a, an arm motion where it like flips up and kind of onto the backdrop, but then we moved on to the conveyor belt idea where we intake onto the conveyor belt, and the conveyor belt drops it onto the backdrop. Uh, i got to ask, uh, we're going to take uh, probably just one question, we'll take the rest offline. Uh, you have a tape measure on your robot. Talk to us about that a little bit. Um, so actually, uh, this tape measure is used to park our robot. Um, it is a work in progress, but we're hoping to get that done soon as well, before, before the matches or maybe even after. But um, they just quickly, um, I wanted to add that. Um, maybe Dia can talk a little bit more about that too. Um, so the tape measure actually works very similarly to our shuffleboard, which we showed earlier um, yesterday. Um, which was actually the shuffleboard was inspired by the tape measure. So thanks uh, for that, Shava. And um, uh, it's currently not programmed because uh, we do not have an autonomous currently programmed, but it is going to be in all of our future gameplay. All right, we do only have one time for one question live, and then we'll take the rest of them offline. So let's go ahead and grab one of them. All right, there's a couple people wondering, how did you come up with the idea for your intake and outtake mechanisms? Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh... I think the outtake mechanism was just developed from a lot of uh, like a, just a large influx of just bouncing ideas off of each other. I mean, obviously, a lot of very smart people on our team, a lot of very smart coaches, and I mean, when you combine that with a lot of crazy ideas, and good ideas, you get um, something that is maybe not feasible to build in 30 hours, but later down the season, this could be something that would be a powerhouse. So, I mean, we we try to try our best to put together something that's working for today. And hopefully we can get it working for the matches. But, um, I mean, the, the whole idea was essentially just to um, have something where you could control more than one game piece at once. Uh, I mean, the max is two, obviously. But obviously we have, like, two slots uh, for game pieces in there. So we would be able to uh, place one uh, pixel in the slot while the belt is moving. And then the other pixel will be placed uh, when the belt moves higher. So we'd be able to essentially just keep loading pieces onto the backdrop while the belt's moving. All right, I know we got a lot more questions coming in, so we're going to take those offline because uh, we have a couple more teams we need to But Phoenix Force, absolutely phenomenal job. This is a super cool robot. Let's give a big round of applause, everybody, for an awesome robot in 30 hours. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu first.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.